All right, we are online. How's it going, everyone? And by everyone, I mean no one yet soon. All right, so we're going to get started here um, in just a minute. Um, I'm going to wait until we get at least a couple people on uh, before we get rocking and rolling. So uh, let me put up uh, put up some slides or something so you guys have something to look at other than me. Uh, here we go. Okay, so uh, today we'll be doing sensation and perception, getting ourselves ready for that uh, quiz tomorrow. All right. Uh -huh. Okay, cool. So, Mozam's in. Okay, so, um, might as well get started. Um, We'll cover some of the stuff, and then if uh, anyone wants to catch back up, they can catch back up. But uh, otherwise, let's uh, it's eight o'clock, so let's get this party started. So um, we're really just going to break into um, all these different uh, lecture notes that we uh, started this week. So we'll start at the beginning, obviously, um, and uh, let's get this party started. Okay, so. Um, once again, when we are looking at um, this chapter, this unit, um, it's a, it's almost like the unit is broken into two pieces. You have your sensation piece, uh, and then you have your perception piece. Um, and so uh, we're going to just hit sensation first and then perception. So once again, um, as we kind of talked about last week, a process by which our sensory receptors and nervous system receive and represent stimulus energy. So that's like the super ridiculous, fancy way of saying it. But all, all this is happening, these are our five senses uh, combining to allow us to see the world around us, to sense the world around us. Um, and yeah, I mean... It's pretty cut and dry. Uh, when we flip over to perception, process of organizing and interpreting, and this is that big word right there, is interpreting stimuli. Arena, what's up? Uh, Arena, if you could mute the video you're watching, thank you. Well, you don't have to mute yourself. If you just mute, because in the background, because you have two screens up, Mute the um, mute the video, and then you should be good. So, and if you're still having trouble with your microphone, uh, you can just talk in the chat over here. Here should be in the bottom in your bottom right hand corner, I believe. Okay, so um, okay, so back to where we were. So once again, we have uh, okay. Hello, Corbin. Um, all right, cool. We got we got some people on. All right, so um, where were we? Uh, trying to. What I need is I need like two computers so I can like look at all of these screens together or at the same time. Okay, uh, so once again, interpreting our sensory information. So uh, especially when we were talking about eyesight. Um, and uh, we didn't get into it as much today as I would have liked, but you know we we see lots and lots of things, but our brain does a whole lot after our eyeballs see something. Um, and once again, that kind of that quintessential example is that our eyes see the world in two dimensions. It's our brain that processes that information and allows us to see depth. Um, and so we really didn't get a lot of time to talk about uh, depth perception today, but that will uh, will spend uh, a good 10 15 minutes on it tomorrow trying to get that before your quiz hello everyone welcome okay 
Uh, so, hey guys, as I'm going through this, uh, throw questions at me. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be another <clears throat> long lecture. So, if you, oh, I already got two likes. It's a good start. Okay. Um, but once again, just um, if you have questions, throw them at me uh, and I will uh, answer them as we go. Um, so, okay. So once again, interpreting sensory information, interpreting what we sense. So let's move forward. Um, so after this, we talked about this absolute versus difference threshold. And once again, this is just us, like, like the limits of our ability to sense the world. Um, you know, absolute threshold, minimum stimulation needed to detect a stimulus 50% um, of the time. So this is a, the smallest amount of stimulus that we can get. And then, oh, okay, I, I noticed that thing. And then difference is just the minimum, once again, minimum, uh, the minimum amount of difference between two stimuli to get, um, to get us to recognize the, the difference between the two, um, whether that being, uh, like, oh, see, I, you know what? I knew when I said something about likes, I'd get like a bunch of likes. Good job, guys. You guys you make me happy. Okay. So, um, okay. So that's, uh, that's the difference versus the absolute threshold. I think that's one of those things that it like takes a minute to explain at first. Um, but then once you, once you get it, it's like, it's it's so self-explanatory especially with this difference threshold so just make sure minimum 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 for both of them and then diff difference is just you have two different stimuli and you're recognizing the difference between those two things okay um, after that we uh, drop down into Weber's law and sensory adaptation um, remember Weber's law really should fall under um, this difference threshold that's what it's really looking at uh, get this picture out of the way. This is really where it should sit. Um, I just have this good picture up here that that uh, works for it. So um, once again, perceive as different two stimuli must er differ at a constant minimum percentage. So this is the percentage, and here are some of the examples of it. Uh, but these are the def like when you are looking at that minimum difference threshold, um, there's a specific percentage where you're going to, where you're going to hit that. Uh, so like light intensity, we said 8%, weight was 2%. That was the example with the pennies. You're holding a hundred pennies and then you take two away. When are you going to, when are you going to, you know, figure out the difference? Um, Alex, I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking, but, uh, we are, we're in the middle right here, son. We don't have time for that. Uh, Rishi, where is that PowerPoint in the folders on Schoology? I don't, I don't post. Rishi, I don't post the PowerPoints. If you go to, uh, the PowerPoints aren't posted, but the um, the notes section is. So give me a second. Let me pull up um, Schoology. Schoology. Uh, let me. Did you guys screen share? Stop. Hello. Um, here we go. So if you're looking on here, chapter outlines, uh, sensation and perception, you have the lecture notes here. And the lecture notes look a little bit more like outline format. So it looks like this. So this is what you'll be looking for. So um, yeah, I don't have, I never post. Um, the actual like, I won't ever post the. Well, I don't know. What do you guys think? Throw throw me uh, throw me some answers on the chat. Would you guys like want the like slot the actual slides, or do you prefer it in the um, outline format? I like the outline format because it's all like right there. But I guess the PowerPoint slides have pretty pictures. I guess. Um, but I mean, look. I mean, these are my PowerPoint slides. They're super. Um, they don't have anything on them. Like you have to like go down and hit the notes section down at the bottom. Cause this, I mean, this is what you look at and then you'd have to look at the notes. So I, I don't know. Y'all, y'all tell me what you think. Cause I mean, I guess that's kind of important. Whoa. Okay. Hey Alex, y'all stop talking to Alex. I don't know why he's even on here. Alex, you need to, you need to figure out some stuff with your life. Please post PowerPoint, the slides, and out both. Guys, listen. Post everything with little notes section two. 
listen, I know you guys like appreciate this, but that's a lot of work. Okay, I'll uh, post everything. Everything is best. Both are good. Oh, Calvin, I will get right on to posting the answers to the quiz. And by that, I mean never, ever, ever. See? Ugh. All right. Here, I can show you some. I'll just, I'm going to be mean to you guys here. Let me see if I can do this. Well, let me just screen share. Yeah. Oh, no, it doesn't. Ah. Anyways, I'm, uh, I altered your quiz today. Oh, uh, by the way, one thing I am going to, I think I'm going to start doing is giving you guys like little, I don't know, tidbits about like, the quiz is or tests. I don't know. Maybe like not a full question, but I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can uh, trick some of you guys into trick trick some other people onto getting onto the stream or at least checking it out by uh, posting like quiz questions or something. Uh, what is Calvin's idea? Post the answers to the quiz. Yes, I think a lot of people like that idea. Thank you, Fatima. You understand the work. Okay. All right. We're done with this. Let's get back to work. Um, once again, if you guys have questions, holla at your boy. Um, okay, so let me. I'm on. I'm not even on screen sharing with you. Okay, enough with me. Teddy's here, by the way, and he is um, trying to play with the ball. He's trying to get me to play. Teddy, come. Yeah, see, I picked it up. He's uh, been chewing on it. So, Pew. okay, but no one cares about that. It's time to go to work. You guys have a quiz tomorrow. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, and then sensory adaptation, diminished sensitivity as a consequence of constant stimulation. Ooh, did you love that um, that dictionary definition right there? Uh, the more you're in an area with something, um, the the less you're just going to notice it or feel it. So, um, so yeah. So there you go. Uh, okay, next we have. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, uh, actually, uh, so selective attention I sometimes have in the, um, in the, what's it called, uh, in the sensation part, but uh, I took it off and moved it somewhere else, so you don't need to, we did that in perception, so no worries. Okay, so coming back to uh, vision, the physical properties of waves, um, once again, I used to ask questions about like what color were these certain lines or whatever, but I think it's dumb. Um, so you guys just need to make sure, um, especially um, just have an idea. I probably won't ask you a question on this. Um, I'm actually about 100% sure I don't ask you a question on this, um, but it is just a good idea to know uh, specifically like what does what does uh, frequency mean when it comes to color versus sound and the same thing with uh, what does um, amplitude mean with the same with the same two things so or sound so color okay. so that's probably all you really need to know okay uh, all right so taking a look at the eye um, uh, there won't be any pictures of like the eye on um, on the test, uh, you won't need to, or or the quiz, like you won't need to know, like this is where the retina is. Um, I'm not really concerned about that, but I do want you to know what they do and the consequences of one being damaged or something like that. So um, I'm just going to walk you through again uh, the the process of um, us seeing in vision. So uh, once again, you have the cornea. This is this outer layer this outer membrane it's really soft but it keeps things outside of your eyeball okay and then you have your pupil your pupils that black part in the center and think of it like a window your pupil is a window into your eye the window into your soul and so what it allows it to do allows a light to come in and the iris is that colored muscle around the eye, whether it be brown or blue or green or pink or purple or whatever color it is. And um, that is the muscle around that contracts or retracts to allow more or less light into the eye. Um, and so you'll, you'll see that changing consistently uh, depending on um, you know, what's going on. Uh, uh, Rishi, it'll be the same with the ear. 
uh, and the far side. Yeah. yeah, Rishi, can we can we get to this? Rishi, you're jumping ahead, son. We we got we got time. We'll cover all those things. Uh, but yeah, uh, no, but I, I I won't ask you to tell me where parts of the ear are. Um, you will need to know what they do. Um, and the far side and near side diagrams are just visualizations of what is happening or why it's happening. So um, I don't think I'd put a picture up of the far sighted versus near sighted, but I don't know, maybe. Uh, okay. Um, oops, sorry. Okay. So light is coming. Light uh, comes into the eye, and if you remember, light travels in waves. Um, as we just you know as we just saw before and so these waves are going to come in and then they hit the lens and the lens here uh, does like reflects it back to the back of the eye and what and, and just in your head what, what process is that called what process is um, the light the lens changing shape to reflect that information back to the eye um, I don't know how to do this. I almost want to do like Scooby-Doo type stuff. Rishi, don't apologize. You're fine. Um, almost thinking like, not Scooby-Doo, but uh, Blue's Clues where they like ask the question and then I'll like pause for like 10 seconds so you can like try to answer it. Um, if that gets annoying, ask or tell me on the live chat or on or tell me in the uh, the comments, so I'll stop doing it. But I'm going to try that for a minute, uh, just so I can like ask questions and see if you guys can get it on your own uh, before I answer them. Refraction? No, it's not refraction. Yeah, it's accommodation. That's what we're looking for. Who the heck is expectation? Yes, accommodation is what we're looking for. Perfect. Okay, so um, so that that process is accommodation. Okay, and remember that's going to be your short-sighted versus near-sighted people. Um, that's you know that's how that's going to happen. Um, is that 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 process of accommodation? The lens is not working the way that it should. Um, so back here we have our retina, and on our retina we have our receptor cells, and you're going to need to know what those two different receptor cells are, and specifically what they do. So first, we have our rods, and what, what do our rods do? Okay, they first, the first thing that they do is they deal with our peripheral vision, okay? They're, they're mostly in, in the periphery of our eyes, so most of them do, do the peripheral vision stuff. They're really good at picking up movement. Um, they see in black and white, and um, they also are helpful in the dark. We use them mostly when it's, when it's dark, okay? Um, then um, we have the cones, and I want you to think, what do the co what do the cones do? The cones' job is it's threefold. It's got three things. First, it's really good in daylight, like it's strongest in daylight. It helps with color. It helps with like fine, um, what's it called? Like really uh, clear, it, it gives us like a good picture. Like if you're really like focusing on something, it's going to give you that like real clear detail. So that's the job of the cones. Um, uh, and if you remember, uh, we have way more rods than we do cones. That's like 120 million in one eye versus six million uh, in the same eye from rods to cones. Um, so way more of those. Uh, and then you have this fovea and. I don't want you to think that the fovea is just where, is just this space right here. Okay, the fovea is like wherever you, that focus is, um, whatever you're kind of like focusing on. So it's point of central focus. Okay, and then you have your optic nerve right here. This is the um, this is where all that sensory information from the eye is going to be sent back uh, to the brain. Um, and specifically, when we we're talking about vision, what lobe of the brain are we looking for? What lobe of the brain are we looking for when uh, we're talking about vision? Which one? That is the occipital lobe is what we're looking for. Man, I wish there wasn't such a big delay because then I wouldn't be sound so silly doing this. Yes, good, Siddharth. Occipital lobe is what we're looking for. Good, Aisha. Good. Mozam got it. Sana's got it. Cassie's got it. Rishi's got it. Okay. Good, 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 good. Peyton's got it. Christina. All right, good, good. You all got it. Uh, Arena's got it. Okay, so uh, then we have our blind spot. And once again, 
so g give me an example. Why, like, why is the blind spot happening? Why, why do we have this blind spot? What, not what the purpose is, but why is it happening? Why is it happening? What's going on with this blind spot? Okay. Uh, so once we are done with that, yep, no sensory receptors. Wunderbar, wunderbar. Okay, talked about that, talked about accommodation. Okay, yep, no rods, no cones there. Perfect. Okay, so uh, yeah, we talked about all these things. Good. So now we have acuity and nearsightedness. Okay, so once again, acuity is just this the sharpness of vision of person's ability to see how well do they see uh, some of us you know have terrible vision and some of us like mr monk have great vision 2020 I actually went to the doctor to get my ch uh my physical and it was the first time that i was actually slightly scared about the thing like i, I there was an f and a p and it was really close and i wasn't a hundred percent sure oh expectation you're jewel okay cool all right hello jewel um so I, I I don't know I think I think my time it may be coming where I'm going to need glasses so I hope that's not the case but it might happen uh, okay so next uh, we have nearsighted versus farsightedness uh, basically just remember nearsighted people can see things up close people who are farsighted can see things that are far away okay there we go and then here's your like little diagram of like why that's happening remember what when we have our um, Oh, there we go. Uh, when we have our um, lens reflecting this information, uh, the process of accommodation, it's supposed to land right here on the retina, but it's not depending on whether you're nearsighted or farsighted. Nearsighted, it's it's happening too close, so the perfect image isn't is too close, and then farsighted, the image is just too far away and it's just not working. So. Uh, that is acuity, nearsighted, farsightedness. Good. Okay. Uh, we already talked about um, about our cones. Remember, cones near rods and cones near the center of the retina. Um, that's good. 120. Okay. Cool. Parallel processing. Okay. So once again, parallel processing. This is um, our ability to understand like the world around us at such like a quick pace why we can play catch and sports and dance and do all that stuff while robots really struggle to do that because there's just so much processing happening at the same time and it might not be super fast but we are able to process so much of this stuff uh so is nearsighted and farsighted not based on phobia but rather the retina no, Rishi, it's based on the it's based on the lens. The the issue is that the lens isn't reflecting it back properly. I mean, I guess it I mean, I guess it's kind of like I guess it kind of deals with the retina because it's just not landing on the right spot. But no, it's definitely not the fovea because you're like even if you are um having a a person who's like nearsighted or farsighted, they're still going to have a phobia. They're still going to have a point of central focus, but because the lens is not doing its job properly, it's just going to be blurry. Like that's still what they're like looking at. So, um, so yeah, good question. That's fine. Okay. So once again, parallel processing, uh, simultaneously processing of several aspects of a problem simultaneously. And specifically when we're looking at the, you know, color motion form and depth and all that jazz. So, Good, 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 good. Okay, so that's vision. Um, are we good with vision? Um, I feel like I think we covered that pretty well. So that's that's. Ow! Sorry, Teddy just accidentally nipped my toe. Um, okay, so let's move forward to audition. Okay, so once again, audition is just our um, ability to hear, our sense of hearing. Okay. So once again, when we are looking at this frequency versus amplitude, frequency is tied to the pitch. So the faster the waves are going, the higher the, the voice um, or the higher the pitch. And the slower that the pitch is going, uh, the lower the sound. So can you guys tell the difference if I have this in mini screen versus... Uh, you guys, wait, can you? 
I'm trying to see. Can you guys tell the difference? You can. Criminy. Okay, I need to have this in full screen, but it's hard to watch both things. Okay, hold on one second. I'm trying to figure out how to make this work because I'm trying to watch multiple screens at the same time. Um, how does that, does this change anything? Ugh, it doesn't change. Does it? Okay, whatever. All right, we're going to just, whatever. Okay, so frequency, pitch, all that, we're good with that. Uh, amplitude, uh, w amplitude is just dealing with the, the loudness or the softness of the sound. Okay, uh, and then we have, uh, yeah, don't, don't try to, don't listen to lots of music for too long. Okay. Um, okay. So then we have uh, the different parts of the ear. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to really quick um, run through um, uh, I'm going to very quickly run through uh, how sound was told. And I don't remember what period it was, but someone asked if, like, the hammer, anvil, and stirrup were, like, the same thing as ossicles or something. And I was like, wait, can we go over bipolar and ganglion cells? Corbin, we're not – this. that's – no. Ganglion cells and bipolar is not, is not on this quiz. They're on the review, but not on the lecture. Wait. What are you talking about? Hold on. Oh, in the in the full review? Why are they on there? They're not supposed to be on there. That's supposed to be that's supposed to be biology of behavior. Do I have the right thing up? Hold on. Where are they on the on the thing? Corbin, where are you finding? Where are you seeing that on the thing? Corbin, why are you why are you doing this? You're on the live stream. I don't understand you sometimes. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to find this for you. Pain. It's not allowing me to look on here. Anyways, you don't need to know either of those things. I don't know why they're on here, because that's supposed to be that's supposed to be for um, biology of behavior. So I'm not sure, Corbin. You don't you don't need to worry about that. Um. So, cool. Okay. All right. Let's get back to it. Okay. So process of hearing. Okay. Remember. Outs, the outermost part of your ear. This is your penna. And very quickly, what is the penna's purpose? What are you supposed to do? Or, or excuse me, what is it supposed to do? What's its job? Yep, reflecting, uh, reflecting sound waves into your ear. That's that's what it's for. That's why it's all like wrinkly and weird looking. Okay, so these sound waves. Remember, sound waves are going to travel through, bouncing around in here in the auditory canal. They're going to hit the eardrum. Okay, and the eardrum is going to begin to vibrate. What is that process called of those sound waves traveling through here, hitting the eardrum and turning into vibrations? It's a big, uh, a big point. Corbin, you are on the live stream. No, you're not on the live stream. Never mind. I thought you were. Yeah, don't. Yeah, the review. Uh, okay. Yeah, the review is like ninety percent for. Uh, transduction, good guys. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Um, transduction, uh, not transduction. Uh, the reviews on there are like 90% for next semester when you guys are tr uh, studying for the AP exam. That's like that's their real purpose. That that's what I want. Really want them for um, is just like a, a super quick, like just like a couple word um, sentences of what what you know, what you need to know. Okay, so transection, good. Okay, so uh, these bones of the middle of the ear, they're called ossicles or the hammer, anvil, or stirrup. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I, I don't know 
my brain was just not there. And I was like, hammer and full stirrup. And they said, Ocicles. I'm like, what? Okay, no. And so I, was, I don't know what I was thinking. Anyways, so Ocicles, hammer and full stirrup. So it's going to transfer that vibration through and it's going to hit the cochlea. And so once again, cochlea is going to begin to vibrate. It's taking those transmissions. Cochlea has got two things inside of it. It's got fluid and it's got um, uh, those hair receptor cells. Okay, so remember, rods and cones are the receptor cells for your eyes, and the hair cells inside the cochlea are the receptor cells for your hearing. So that's the stuff, that's what's gonna take that information, take those sound waves, once again, more transduction, it's gonna take that energy and it's gonna transfer it into neural transmissions. So it's gonna send messages through neurons out into uh, the brain. And once again, what lobe of the brain are we looking for here? What lobe of the brain deals with our sense of hearing? Temporal lobe. Yes, temporal lobe is what we are looking for on the side, both on the sides of the head, right here. Okay. So, um, yeah. So that is that is that. Uh, it's all this mumbo jumbo here. Okay. Um, okay. Ugh, place theory, frequency theory. I hate talking about this. It, it's just ugh. place theory. Theory that links uh, the pitch we hear with the place. Uh, place where the cochlea's membrane is stimulated. So again here, we're looking at our cochlea. Sound travels through here, uh, and the specific sound is 800 hertz. Well, this area right here, these um, receptor cells, they pick up 800 hertz worth, worth of sound. And so they're going to activate, they're gonna vibrate, they're gonna be like, oh, hey, we heard the, we heard our sound, this is our boy, like, woohoo, like, send that information on. And that info is gonna go off to the temporal lobe, okay? So that's place theory. Frequency, frequency theory, a theory that the rate of nerve impulses, okay, so as the sound comes in, these nerve impulses traveling up the auditory, stop doing that, up the auditory nerve matches the frequency of a tone, thus enabling us to sense pitch, okay? So you have the nerve hairs in here matching the sound that comes in, and so that, that's how you separate them. Honestly, if I was you guys, and they're talking about like our ability to sense pitch, you know they're asking for, um, place theory versus the frequency theory. There's not any other theories, just memorize place theory. And if you're, and if it's not like, all right, we, we hear, we hear the pitch in this part of the membrane or it picks it up in this part of the membrane, then it's not place theory. Just memorize one of them and you'll have the other one. And I'd prefer you memorize place theory because you'll much more, you're much more likely to remember it. So that is my advice to you. Cause that's just a, I don't even like talking about the theory. It's dumb. Okay, um, so we didn't get really a chance to talk about this um, when we were uh, doing, um, what's it called, in class. I wanted to like move forward. Uh, but basically, this is just kind of showing you, um, you know, how do we sense, how do we pick up where sound is coming from? And if you notice, like, we're pretty good at, like, you hear your name and you, like, immediately whip around to that person or that general area where you heard your name. Like, we're good at picking up that information. And so the question is, is why? Like, why are we so good at that? Um, and it's just because our ears are just so incredibly sensitive to the information that's coming in. So you see here a sound's being... Uh, thundered in and it's going to hit this part of the head fractionally before it hits this side and so or or bounces off a wall and comes back and sound travels very quickly and our head and our uh, uh ears are very good at picking up that information no what happened why are we not seeing what, what oh no oh no it is okay it's fine wait are you guys not seeing what wait why is that not working calvin don't laugh at me Hold on, what's going on? I have my thing up. Wait a minute. Ah! I don't know what's going on. Let's try this again. No? Share. Does that work? Why is that? Wait, does that work? Oh no, don't do that. Oh my gosh, it's exploding. Okay, hold on, sorry guys, I gotta do this one more time. Stop. 
What's wrong? Share. Okay, is that? Okay, there we go. We're back. All right, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. That It just, my I didn't like put a shit down or anything. Okay, okay, okay. So here we go. Um, okay, so that's how, that's how, that's, you know, something we're good at, picking up the direction of sound. So we can do that thing. Okay, so I need to speed things up a little bit. Okay, conduction uh, hearing loss versus nerve hearing loss. Remember, conduction hearing loss is a mechanical system, something that has um, that is affecting our the sound waves trying to reach the cochlea. So once again, eardrum splitting, any of the um, bones of the middle ear, you could have the cochlea split. Your penna could be um, could be like cut off, like if you don't have like an ear, um, and that would affect, that would cause some sort of hearing loss. You'd probably be able to hear still if your pinna was cut off, but um, it would, you'd have some damage there. It wouldn't hear as well. Okay, uh, and then nerve hearing loss. This is just loss and damage to the cochlea's receptor cells. Which, what are the receptor cells again? Those are the hairs, and also the auditory nerve could, could that, that could happen as well. So, um, yep, oh, ring in the ears called tin tinnitus. Yep. Affects more than 36 million people. We had a couple kids uh, in, I believe it was third period that had uh, tinnitus. So, sucks. Um, okay, uh, audition, whatever. You don't need to know that. Okay, skin sensation. Once again, uh, pressure is going to be the only skin sens sensation with identifiable receptors. Um, yep, just know that. I mean, it's skin. It, it allows us to feel pressure. Uh, and then we have the gate control theory. Okay, once again, theory that the spinal cord contains a neurological quote-unquote gate that blocks pain signals or allows them to pass to the brain. So once again, we are in control of whether or not we feel pain. We get to say, okay, well, all right, well, this is painful, yeah, but I've got this other thing going on that I need to make sure um, that I do. Um, and so, um, so we kind of ignore that that pain and you know struggle through it if need be. Okay, um, cool. All right. So, ba -ba 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 -ba. okay. So taste. Remember, sweet, sour, bitter, umami. Um, our taste receptors are going to be on our tongue. Um, and then when we are looking at sensory interaction, I'm not going to ask you about like these different, like what is you know name the five taste sensations. Like just that's dumb. Okay. Uh, you might get asked about sensory interaction, the principle that one sense uh, may influence another as when we smell food influences its taste. So um, those are, you know, sensory interactions. Our interactions, uh, in you know, they interact. They do things together. So, um, okay, uh, sense of smell. Once again, all that's happening is these particles from inside or from like the flower or whatever you're smelling are going up into your nose. You have your, these, once again, hair receptor cells at the top of your, um, at like the base of your, or not the top, the, the top of your nose or whatever up here. I don't know what this is called. The base of your skull, top of your nose. And uh, that's going to pick up that information. It's going to send it through here. Uh, just to kind of give you an idea, send it up through here. This is the olfactory nerve right here, and then it's going to transmit that information. Here's your olfactory nerve, and it's going to bring it down to um, the bulb, and that's where you're going to pick up that information. So, uh, yep, that's that. Okay, men are, or women are better than men at smelling, which is cool, I guess. I mean, I guess. I don't know, ladies. Do you think it's cool? Mm -hmm. I don't know, because I'm a guy. All right, uh, so next, body position and movement, kinesthesis, vestibular sense. I can guarantee you there's going to be one question on the quiz, and you're going to need to make sure that you know the difference between kinesthesis and vestibular sense. Remember, kinesthesis, body position and movement of individual body parts. We know where our individual body parts are, okay? Vestibular sense, body movement and position, also our sense of balance. That's the big one right there. Sense of balance, our ability to like know that like oh we're not like falling over or whatever like you know we can we can stay upright just like this type rope tightrope walker. Okay. Um, okay, that's gonna do it for sensation. Whoa. Wait, what was sensory adaptation again? Uh, sensory adaptation. You have two. Wait, F. Uh, sensory. Oh, after we stop sensing certain stimuli, but he said something about smelling. Affecting taste. 
That's sensory interaction. Yes. Thank you, Siddharth. Sen thank you, Jewel. You guys are the bomb. Yes. So that's sensory interaction right here. Boom. Sensory interaction. That is different from sensory adaptation. All right. Bala. Let's move on. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, before I move on, any questions on, on sensation? Anybody confused about anything? Anybody have any questions? Okay, cool. All right. So let's move on to perception. Let's minimize that. Let's blow this bad boy up. Okay. What am I? Stop. Uh, there we go. Okay, so perception. All right, um, so once again, we're going to be covering these things, and we're actually, uh, I'm going to spend some time talking about the stuff that will be in class tomorrow, so you guys uh, maybe won't have to write so frantically. You can just kind of listen in. So perceptual set, okay, refers to the tendency to perceive objects or situations from a particular frame of reference. Remember, everything that you sense, everything that you perceive is colored by your past experiences, like your uh, sense of taste in music, your sense of, uh, you know, the foods that you like are, dip are heavily influenced by your past experiences, by your family, by the people that you hang out with. I remember when I was in high school, um, you know, I was like the alternative rock and roll, like Evanescence and Linkin Park and Hoobastank. And uh, my senior year, I played football, and all the guys on the football team listened to, like, rap music. And so for, like, half a year, I got into rap, and I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Oh, slow down. You guys have questions. I'm sorry. I was rolling forward. Uh, hey, Mr. Monk, I was absent first period today. What is the FRQ over? Uh, FRQ is over um, – Oh, yeah, depth perception. And Zohair, we will cover like all of depth perception in class. Uh, so you'll be taking the FRQ tomorrow and you like it, it you won't like no one has talked about F, uh, about that yet. So um, yeah, and we'll, we'll you'll be ready for it. So thank you guys. You guys are doing great. Doing my work for me. Okay, okay, okay. So once again, Frame of reference. Where are you from? And so I didn't really get a chance to talk about this specific example, but uh, this was a uh, 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 Dr. Hudson went to Banff to South Africa, and basically he found that people who like who had been to school, had read books, had seen pictures, and not like you are smarter than these other people, uh, but recognized that this guy was throwing the spear at this antelope, and what he found was that like people who didn't have a lot of like experience reading and looking at pictures and reading books and stuff oftentimes thought that the guy was throwing the spear at the elephant because that depth perception as part of reading a book just wasn't really there. They just didn't have an experience from it. And so it's not like, oh, these guys are stupid, but it's like this like being able to read a book and oh excuse me, hold on one second. Teddy, come. Teddy's trying to get in my roommate's room. Bad dog. Okay. Um, and so it's not that they're dumb. They're just – they just don't have a lot of experience reading books. And so this picture to them didn't make a lot of sense. This like – this idea that the elephant was like far and away and like under – I don't know. It's weird. It's really weird. Um, but that's uh, – but that's perceptual set. Okay. Context effects come in tomorrow morning. For tutorials, um, you want to have the last place that you study um, be, you know, where you're going to be for your test. Okay, so you are better at recalling information in a particular context or location uh, that you first learn that same context. So, um, so yeah, so if you are, you know, ever planning on taking a test underwater, study underwater. Okay, that's a dumb example, but 
there we go. Okay, selective attention, ability to focus on one thing when there are a million things going on around you. Remember, I highlighted this idea that it's an ability. This is awesome. The fact that we can do this is great. If you are someone that deals with uh, uh, attention deficit disorder, ADD, or know someone that's like that, this is the problem, is that they can't, they have so much trouble focusing in on just one thing. Their, their mind is over here, it's over here, and they're focusing on a bunch of stuff. And not, it's not that they can't focus on anything, it's that they're focusing on too many things. And it's so distracting, it's so frustrating. I mean, you know what it's like when you're having a conversation, whoa, hold on, Dasal, oh, Mr. Monk, if we come in for the morning tutorial, when should we come? Seven o'clock. I'll be there. Oh, no. Oh, I have. Mm, I'm supposed to go to duty. I'm not going to go to duty. Just come in at 7. I'll be there. Or maybe a little bit before 7 because um, sometimes p teachers like check if you have a pass, and I haven't given you guys a pass. So I need to write like everyone in my class like a universal pass. Like this just works for all classes because like some teachers do check and then some teachers don't. I don't know really what the system is, but whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah. So there you go. That's selective attention. Okay, talked about change line, blindness versus intentional blindness. Uh, change blindness, failure to notice that what's there right now and what was there a moment ago. That was the goofy video of the guy like walking through. And then intentional blindness, the failure to notice something that is fully obvious right in front of you when your attention is on something else. Now, the big change, the big difference here is this change. Something has changed. Intentional blindness is like it's been there this entire time and you just missed it because you were focusing on something else. So that's like the floor tiles in the hall or the color of the lockers um, or, you know, different like parts in my room you might have not noticed. Like I have like certain posters about a video game or I have, um, I don't know, I don't know, just simple stuff that like is right in front of you. I'm trying to think of things you guys might have missed. In my class, um, I have goggles hanging down from the television screen, um, like right above my chair, or not my chair, the the big comfy chair. So, yeah. So there you go. Okay. So that is, whoa, wrong one. Okay. So that is perception. Whoa. Hold on. Are you guys? Is this caught up? Yes, it is. I, no, it's not. What is it doing? Hold on. Do you guys see what I am? Oh, it's blowing up. Oh my gosh. This is ridiculous. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to fix things. Um, uh, oh, here we go. Teddy has decided to come up while I try to fix this. Thank you, Teddy. I don't know what's going on. I'm not giving him enough attention. Let's try this again. Uh, share. Okay, cool. All right, so that's change in intentional blindness. Easy peasy. Next, we have Gestalt psychology, perceptual organization. Okay, remember Gestalt psychology is that old school of psychology. This was from one of the early schools, and they were trying to figure out. They were trying to describe the human condition based on this idea that we take so many shortcuts. Our brain tries has so much to process, and so it takes shortcuts to try to understand the world and what is going on. Okay, so. An organized whole. It's trying to pull this world together and make sense of all of the different random stuff that's going on. Psychologists emphasize our tendency to integrate pieces of in information into organized wholes. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, figure ground grouping. Um, Remember, for your ground the organizational, uh, uh, the organization of the visual field. So visual field, like what you are looking at, um, into objects, the figures. So uh, if you're looking at this, this is the black part or maybe the white part, whatever you're focused on, the figures that stand out from their surroundings, the ground, so the background. I like that word surroundings. I should have used that yesterday. Okay, so these pictures illustrate to us uh, the figure and ground idea as it is very difficult to see both pictures at the same time. You're generally focusing on the faces or you're focusing on the vase or the face of the, hum of the, girl, of the woman or the uh, saxophone player. Um, are your posters from League? Yes, Peyton, my posters are from League. Well, two of them, the, the two dunk ones at the front, those are from League of Legends. So that's like a 
League of Legends inside joke, so, you know. Only the really cool people will get it, but that's okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Calvin. Did you want to pass my class? Mm, I don't think so. Calvin wants to fail. All right. Well, Calvin, you know, I tried to help you, but there we go. See, DeSaul knows what he's talking about. He knows how to get brownie points. Way to go, DeSaul. Uh, Peyton, you don't want to know. Oh, geez. I haven't played League of Legends in ages. Um, I think the last time I was like silver. No. Oh, no. Two seasons ago, I was like silver f two. So, yeah, silver two. And then this last season, I got um, I got ranked like bronze, like I think bronze two. And uh, I, um, yeah, so. Yeah, anyways, uh, Calvin, you can expect a major drop in your grade in the very near future. No more being nice to you. Uh, Josh, I do actually play Magic of the Dragons, and I actually play Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, so I actually run a game every Saturday, but that is not important. We only have 10 minutes. Guys, listen, you don't need to know about my personal life. That's not going to be on the qu quiz. See, Rishi knows what he's talking about. Greatest classical and old age music, Jeremy Soul. Yes, sir. Um, Corbin, it's okay. A lot of people wish they were as cool as me. Um, so, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Guys, stop distracting me. Okay. Hold on. We have to get through this. Okay. Grouping. Perceptual tendency to organize stimuli into coherent groups. Okay. Remember, this is just the, um, this is just us wanting to make sense of the world. Okay. So, God, Teddy, dude. Um, so I, I have not played with him enough, obviously, today. Uh, so uh, proximity, similarity, these are all concepts of, of grouping. I really wanted to get to depth perception, so let's go through this quick. Okay, depth perception. Remember, visual cliff, this is just that experiment that they did a long time ago. It's a full table. It's not a half table, although it looks at this was glass, and they were just testing whether or not the child had depth perception. Generally, kids pick up this depth perception around uh, three to six months three to six months of age, and um, and yeah, so know that. Uh, that's the visual cliff, okay? Binocular cues, depth cues, such as retinal disparity that depend on the use of two eyes. We need two eyes in order for us to see retinal disparity, not depth perception, but the concept of uh, that part of depth perception, the part of depth perception that is perceived with two eyes is known as a binocular cue or retinal disparity, and that is showing that uh, our brain compares the images from the two retinas, okay? And because these, the, the two images that it, it makes are from two different things. And so that comparison of those two things, um, and so it's, and basically it says the greater the difference between the two images, the closer the object. Uh, so you'll see that, um, yeah, and so that's when you did that, f the stupid floating sausage thing where like we put it right in front of their face and your brain was trying to figure out what the heck it was you were doing to it. Um, so that's retinal disparity. That's binocular cues. That is something that will be on your um, FRQ. This, you will need to know retinal disparity um, or that is a something that you can write about on your thing. Okay. Uh, Peyton, I appreciate it, but in the end, oh no, what's going on? What did I just do? Okay. Uh, wait, before I forget, but when we're done reviewing, sensation thresholds, again, I missed it before. Okay, I'll, uh, Sana, remind me to, to do that. Uh, yes, and you can also do that. Okay, um, Okay. here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, monocular cues. Depth cues available to either eye only. Okay, so we're only doing this with one eye. Okay, first, relative height. Okay, so how do we know, once again, we're trying to perceive depth how do we know that these pelicans, one of the reasons we know that these pelicans are closer than these, um, than this, uh, these buildings. Look, this is your field of vision, okay? So imagine this is your field of vision. This is what you're looking at. Look at the perspective. These things are way close. We know are one of the ways we know they're closer is because they are low on our field of vision and these are high in the field of vision. 
So when you're looking at different things, like the one of the ways that you know the difference between those two, the distances are different, is because the things that are higher in your field of vision are farther away, and things that are lower in your field of vision are closer. And so that's why this is uh, this is a, an example of it. It's an optical illusion, but these are the same size. Um, let me insert a shape. Uh, let's do a box. Okay, so you have a box. Here we go. Uh, this covers this guy right there. That's the exact same size. Okay. It looks, uh, I don't know how to do see through. Sorry. I don't know how to do see through, but it's the exact same size. Look, you can see like a little bit above and below. And then you can see a little bit above. You can see a little bit below. Okay. So I don't know if that's, is that whatever? Anyways, so that's the same size. So it's messing with your mind because. Um, we think that things that are lower and closer to us, lower in our field of vision are closer to us, and things that are higher in our field of vision are farther away, okay? So let's return all this to where it was supposed to be. Okay, relative size, okay, simple. Okay, why do we know that this air balloon is closer to us than this air balloon way over here? Because if we know that two objects are similar size, the one that's bigger is closer. These are so simple. These are so easy, okay? So that's why this picture is kind of funky. These two orange things are the exact same size, but because of the relative items around it, it changes the way we think. This looks, this one right here, looks smaller than this right here. And the only reason is because it's got a bunch of big friends around it. Like, think of, like, when you are, um, I don't know, a basketball Okay, when you're watching basketball and you look at all of those basketball players on the court, they all look like normal people. And then you put them up against like next to a referee or an announcer, and you're like, holy crap, these people are tiny. No, the referee and the announcer look are just normal sized people. It's these giant NBA players. So that's relative size. That's that's kind of that uh, that optical illusion that's kind of playing with you there. So um, it's not bigger than was. I know you want it to be bigger, but it's not. Tomorrow I will bust out a ruler and I will show you. It's fantastic. Okay, so relative clarity. Okay, relative clarity. If something is closer, you are going to see finer detail. Okay, so in this picture, you can see. Ooh, it's blowing up. You can see the fine, de it's a decently fine detail here. And as we get farther away, there's less detail here. And we barely can see any detail over here. Relative clarity, monocular Q. Cover one eye and you can still see this. Okay, easy peasy. Next, relative motion. Okay, as we move, objects that are actually stable may appear to move. So when we are moving, and if you take a look at this, like this is trippy, that'll like move around for you, um, which is weird. Uh, but basically, what we have here is when you see a jet flying far away, do they look like they're going fast? No, they look super slow. And part of that reason is they are so far, the way, far away. Things that are far away look like they're moving really slow, and things that are really close seem to move by very, very quickly. So if you're driving in a car and you're like zooming down at 60 miles an hour, the things that are very close to you, like right on the ground next to you, fly past you and they just zip on by. Um, and so that helps us um, understand like, distance and depth like we know one of the reasons that we know that this thing is so far away is because it's moving so slowly and we know wait a minute that's a plane those things are enormous those are super big why is that why is that happening well it's super far away so we know it's far okay or it's moving super slow so it's one of the ways we know it's far okay interposition okay <laughs> this is literally the dumbest one ever so interposition how do we know that this mommy dog mother dog is farther away it's because part of our view is blocked by these puppies that's interposition if one object partially blocks our view of another we perceive it as closer Woo! look at us guys we are learning psychology easy easy stuff this is all thing that your brain processes at a super quick pace okay we know this dog is technically farther away because things are closer uh, because these things are closer and are blocking the view okay linear perspective Parale parallel lines appear to meet in the distance, okay? So when you are looking at these train tracks here, okay, these tracks look like they are converging down here in the distance. 
and we know they're not converging. We know these are parallel lines, but this is a way that shows us, okay, this is much farther away um, because um, those lines are converging. And let me see. I don't know if this is – I really don't know if this is going to work. Um, let me – so you see this. I'm taking a piece. I'm copying and pasting it. I'm putting this here, and I'm putting this up here, okay? You just saw me put these pieces together. They are the same size. I copy pasted. But this looks much bigger than than this right here. Okay? And why is that? Well, perspective wise, everything behind it is like this is showing us this is far away. This is in the distance. And when we the farther we move it, the bigger it looks. And this looks really tiny because perspective wise, it's really small. Look at that. That looks different. It's so difficult to tell. We want this line to come down and reach like way out here, but they're the same size as we know. Bam, because I made it. Booyah. Mind blown. Okay, parallel lines. All right, there we go. That is linear perspective. And I w will unfortunately not have that ability when I'm doing, um, doing this tomorrow. I'll try to draw it or something and ruin it and ruin everyone's lives. Yes. Oh my, that's very trippy. I want to say it isn't the same size. I know to all. I know it's crazy. I, I'm really glad. I, I might have to figure out. I might have to do it that way tomorrow. That was really good. I was happy with that. Okay. Oh, we're already past time. Okay, well, we have to do this really quick. Okay, light and shadow. Okay, last thing. Shading uh, produces a sense of depth consistent with our assumption that light comes from above. Okay. So when we're looking at this picture here, this looks normal. This looks like the sun is coming from above. So dimmer objects appear farther away because they reflect less light. And I'll show you another picture of that. But like these look like they're coming from above. Uh, like this looks normal. This looks like two balls falling out of a hole. But this is the same picture. It's just flipped. Now, when it says dimmer objects appear farther away because they reflect less light, well, they reflect the same amount of light, but they're but they're because they're so far away and this is not a, the right picture, but look at these mountains back here. They look, everything kind of looks like the blue, like gray, like that kind of dark shade of blue color. The sun is out and you can see the parts of this that aren't in the shade are this nice, real bright um, color. But this back here, well, it's just really dark and gray. And that's just because less of the light is reflecting back. This is probably like green trees or grass or something. This, These are probably bright. Like that is not the color of whatever is on that mountain um, or hill slope. Like if you went closer, it would not be reflecting this color. And that's just a way that light um, shows us depth. And once again, you can see that with one color. Okay. Cool. We're done. That's it's nine o'clock. I have a soccer game to go to tonight. Um, so quickly, what is, is anyone have any questions? I know I didn't like go over like quiz questions and stuff or whatever this time, but um, you guys got a head start. You guys got a head start on yesterday's lecture. Any last questions before I jet? Dasal, wait. Yes. Yes, Dasal. Ask that thing. Uh, good night, Alex. Alex, seriously, we need to have a discussion about what you're doing with your life. Uh, for the FRQ, are there any examples that we need to know? What do you mean? No, no, you make the example. No, uh, you'll, you'll, the, okay, so for the neurotransmitters, I just was giving you very good, like, little examples that you could use. Most of the time, you're going to have to come up with your own stuff. So we'll talk about it tomorrow. It'll be fine. Like you come you, – like think about – look, listen. We're going to talk about your FRQ is over like relative clarity and relative motion. W relative motion, what could be an example? Uh, in the car when I am driving uh, and I look out the window and see things rush by really quickly, I know that they're close. Boom. There's your example. That's the kind of stuff that you're going to have to do um, later on. Why are you so bad at league? Nick, Calvin, never talk to me again. Um, we usually need to know examples. Yes, such as cocaine or deficit. Okay, did that answer your question? Good night, Jason. Do we have binocular and monocular cues at the same time? Do they affect each other? Um, I wouldn't say they have like a specific effect on each other, but they are going off at the same time. Like, like 
when I'm saying monocular cues, I'm saying you only need one eye to do this. Um, but th but they are happening at the same time. They're both like doing whatever. Um, so um, so yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Does that uh, does that answer your question? Is monocular cues on the quiz? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, you'll have both monocular and binocular. It is possible you have both mon monocular and binocular questions um, on your quiz. They're they're still totally fair game. So, okay, you're welcome, guys. Um, good luck studying tonight. Go to bed. It's late, or at least you know, uh, go to bed soonish. Ten o'clock. Ten o'clock. I'm gonna go kick some butt in soccer, and by kick some butt, probably get my butt kicked and lose. But I'm gonna try really hard, and that's all that matters. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Y'all have a great night. Good luck studying. Um, I will be in my room seven o'clock tomorrow. Uh, so if you want to do like a last minute uh, study sesh, or if you just want to sit down and, and look over your stuff, I will be there. So otherwise, you guys have a good night, and we will see you tomorrow.